70 million people consider themselves Irish, yet only 6.5 million live on the island of Ireland. Many of those who emigrated were our families, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, sons and daughters, and many have never returned. Famines, wars, unemployment, and the promise of a better life is ingrained in the Irish psyche, while the skeletal remains of former generations lie dotted along the backbone of every town and county throughout our island. An abandoned Ireland. As prospectors of social history, one never knows where the next serendipitous tale will appear. That's part of the journey and the magic. The beauty of urbex and rurex is the ability to breathe a sigh back into the lives of the deceased. Folk who have no one left to tell their story. And once the for sale sign has been removed, the future of their home and its contents looks certain to end in a landfill site. Here are some of their stories. Everyday stories. Everyday people. In a small rural community in the west of Ireland, Anthony and Katie chose to live out their days as companions, lovers perhaps, first cousins, only children, and neither bearing offspring. The legacy of their family name lost across the Atlantic to distant relatives on distant shores. While he tended his cattle, she tended their modest hillside home until the day she left, never to return. A shoulder of liquor, the last remaining warmth and comfort in the cold, bleak winters of Antony's solitude, before he too followed Katie to another life. A modest farmhouse in a small rural town on the Galway Roscommon border is where Eddie lives, as did generations of his kin. That hardy look of rawhide, barbed wire, and piercing blue eyes is captivating. The Sacred Heart still burns bright inside the front door of his former home, the old cottage. Time changes everything, he says. So many neighbours and friends have moved on. As our tour guide for the day, we flash past dereliction of all descriptions. Hedgerows lined with corrugated iron roofs and crumbling walls of creeping ivy, the thatch long since removed. The old main road into town, now a forest trail. This world is not our home, we're just passing through, he continues. It was many a night we would gather in these houses and play cards well into the early hours. All great neighbours, and sure we got on the finest. Later that day, the yard buzzes into life with the arrival of his daughter and grandchildren. How's my little girlie? Eddie smiles, his towering frame swooping down to lift up his granddaughter. My grandchildren are everything, he says, sadly having lost his wife, Teresa, some 20 years ago. Up the mountain, he chants, the swagger of his days expressed in his love of horses and good old country music. In 2006, the Irish government signed up to a policy which would close and sell off its portfolio of psychiatric hospitals. Among these are some magnificent 19th century properties which had provided shelter to the homeless, the addicts, the mentally ill, the misfits, and the simply unwanted for over 150 years. Sadly, these asylums reflected the broader society at the time, with its economic struggles and antiquated laws on committal, reaching a peak in 1963, when a reported 20,000 people were quarantined from society. Referred to as shameful relics of the past, these buildings became vital organs, purifying the life force of society before handing the care of its patients back to the community. But what of the remains of their former homes? Do they too have a story to tell if only one is brave enough to step inside the unfamiliar, the uncomfortable and the unpredictable long after the last patient has left? Wandering through the echoing wards and endless corridors, light floods in from huge windows into the partitioned wards, warming the air and the tone of the many layers of peeling paint, which hangs like bunting from the archways along the corridors. 
On the back side of the building, many of the windows have been boarded up, making the atmosphere thick, damp and menacing. It's also where the cells are to be found. The ebb and flow of breath moves about the building unchecked as doors open and close, carrying with it the smell of decay as the ideals of care have been outlived. And yet there is a sense of calm forgiveness from within the chaos of the asylum and every other home we visited. The slow beating heart within their walls has also been critically wounded. All they ever hoped for was to serve their community as a place of security, comfort and healing. Closing the doors behind us to leave, their voices are once again lowered to a whisper, a catalogue of photos and footage becoming their only remaining connection to the outside world. Remember me, they utter. <laughs>